Hi, everyone. I'm John Tarilla, one of the authors of Topology, a Categorical Approach. In this video, I'm going to talk about compactifications. I'll say what they are. I'll discuss compactifications in general. I'll talk about the one-point compactification and the stone check compactification. Let's begin with the definition. A compactification of a space X is an embedding of X as a dense subset of a compact Hausdorff space. That is, a compactification of X is a map, call it I, a continuous injection from X into a, a space Y, where Y is compact in Hausdorff, I is an embedding, so that means that X is isomorphic to its image with the subspace topology. Equivalently, X has the smallest topology, making the map I continuous. And lastly, the closure of X is all of Y. Now let's look at some examples. Uh, you have a compactification of the open unit disk included in the closed unit disk by adding the boundary. There's another compactification of the open unit disk as in included in the sphere, which you can think of as first including in the disk and then identifying the boundary of the disk to a point. Or you can identify different parts of the boundary of the disk, the closed unit disk, to obtain a compactification of the open disk as a dense subspace of the torus. Now, uh, you can make a category out of compactifications of a space X. I have to tell you what a morphism between two compactifications of X is. So if you have a compactification I from X to Y and I prime from X to Y prime, a morphism of the compactification is a map from Y to Y prime that commutes with the embeddings. So for an example, uh, you have an compactification of the open disk as the inside the closed disk, you have a compactification of the open disk as a sphere, and the map that from the disk to the sphere obtained by identifying the boundary to one point is an example of a morphism between these two compactifications. It turns out that morphisms between compactifications are rather rare. If you have a map between two compactifications, it has to be unique. To prove it, assume you have two different uh, morphisms between a compactification I and I prime. Because uh, they're morphisms of compactifications, they commute with I and I prime, so they agree on the image of X inside of Y, which is a dense subset. Continuous functions on a Hausdorff space that agree on a dense subset must be equal. As a consequence, if you have a morphism of compactifications from Y to Y prime and a morphism of compactifications from Y prime to Y, then Y and Y prime must be isomorphic. And the reason is because you can compose these two morphisms of compactifications to get a morphism of compactifications from Y to Y and from Y prime to Y prime. Because of the uniqueness of morphisms between compactifications and that the identity is always a morphism of compactifications, these compositions FG and GF in both directions must be equal to the identity. Now, categories uh, for which you have at most one morphism between any two objects, and if you have morphisms that go in both directions, the objects are isomorphic, are special. They're called partially ordered sets. The conclusion is that the category of compactifications of a space is a partially ordered set. And if that space is nice, say locally compact in Hausdorff, then even more is true. To see how locally compact in Hausdorff come into it, let me explain what kind of spaces have one-point compactifications. Uh, that is, a one-point compactification of X, I'll call it X star, is a compactification where X star minus the image of X is just one point, which I'm going to call infinity. If X has a one-point compactification, then X must be Hausdorff, not compact, and locally compact. X has to be Hausdorff because subspaces of Hausdorff spaces are always Hausdorff. X has to be not compact because if X were compact, it would be a compact subspace of a Hausdorff space and therefore closed, and its closure would be itself instead of X star. And to understand why X has to be locally compact, 
it helps to see that the open subsets of infinity inside of x star are precisely the complements of compact subsets of x. If you have an open subset of infinity, its complement is closed. It's a closed subset of a compact space. Therefore, it must be a compact subset of x. On the other hand, if you have a compact subset of x, it's a closed, it's a compact subset of a Hausdorff space, so it's closed, and its complement must be an open subset in x star and has to contain infinity. Now, this will explain why x has to be locally compact. Uh, to see that, take any point x in your space x. Because x star is Hausdorff, there exist open sets to separate this point x from infinity. Let's call the open set around x u and the open set around infinity v. Then the complement of v will be a compact subset of x that contains the neighborhood u as required to show that x is locally compact. The conclusion is that if x has a one-point compactification, x star, x must be Hausdorff not compact and locally compact. Now, these three necessary conditions are actually sufficient for x to have a one-point compactification. And you can construct the one-point compactification of x by putting in an extra point, calling it infinity, defining the open subsets of infinity to be the complements of compact subsets of x, and check that that actually does define a topology, and the inclusion of x into the x star is a compactification. So if x is locally compact, Hausdorff, and not compact, then the category of compactifications of x has, uh, is more than just a partially ordered set. It has a smallest element, this one-point compactification. And in fact, the theorem is that uh, the category of compactifications is a complete lattice. Here's the picture you should have in mind. You have a smallest compactification of x, which is the one-point compactification. And every other compactification maps to that one-point compactification. And it turns out that there's a largest compactification. Uh, let's denote it by beta x. It's called the stone check compactification that maps to every other compactification. The way I like to think of the stone check compactification is as the left adjoint of the inclusion of the category of compact Hausdorff spaces into the category of topological spaces. Now, it's a theorem that requires a proof that there is such an adjoint. But first, let's unwind what it means to say that the stone check compactification is left adjoint to the inclusion of compact Hausdorff spaces into the category of topological spaces. What that means is that there's a bijection between the sets of continuous functions from the stone check compactification of a space x and a compact Hausdorff space y, and the continuous functions from x to y. You get even more insight if you look at the unit of this adjunction, which for each topological space x gives you a morphism, call it eta sub x, from x into the stone check compactification. And this map, at least when x is nice, like locally compact in Hausdorff, will actually be a compactification of x. And as the unit of the adjunction, it satisfies a universal property. Namely, for all compact Hausdorff spaces y and all maps from x to y, there exists a unique extension to the stone check compactification of x. Now, this discussion of the stone check compactification as an adjoint uh, to the inclusion of compact Hausdorff spaces into the category of topological spaces tells you what the stone check compactification is. It tells you what's important about it. It gives you its universal property, but it doesn't prove that it exists. In order to prove that the stone check compactification exists, you have some choices. One is to use an adjoint functor theorem. Uh, this, the hard part of that is you have to prove that certain categorical limits in the category of compact Hausdorff spaces exist, which, for example, you have to prove that uh, the product of compact Hausdorff spaces is compact in Hausdorff, which is something like the Tikhonov theorem. For another proof of existence, you can do a point set construction of the stone check compactification of X and prove it has all the right properties. 
This is done, for example, in Monkries. And as a third option, you can see the stone check compactification as the space of ultra filters on X. Uh, the set of ultra filters on a space X has a certain topology. It's something like the Zariski topology on the spec of a ring. You have a nice map from X into the space of ultra filters by sending a point to the principal ultra filter of that point. And I think that's a nice construction of the stone check compactification. As an application, let me use the stone check comp compactification to give a really nice proof of Tikhonov's theorem. So suppose you have a, a bunch of compact spaces X alpha and consider the product of the X alphas. I want to prove that the product of the X alphas is compact. First, look at the stone check compactification of the product of the X alphas. Now, all the projection maps from the product of the X alphas are maps to compact Hausdorff spaces. And so you get maps from the stone check compactification of the product down to each factor X alpha. And by the universal property of the product topology, this means that these F alphas, as I've drawn them here, assemble to give you a map from the stone check compactification of the product down to the product, showing that the product of the X alphas is the image of a compact Hausdorff space, therefore is compact. I think it's worth pointing out that there are set theoretic issues uh, in the existence of the stone check compactification. I just proved that the stone check compactification implies Tikhonov's theorem, which is known to be equivalent to the axiom of choice. And these set theoretic issues come up in all of the arguments that I described to prove existence. For the adjoint functor theorem, you need to use Tikhonov's theorem. Monkries uses explicitly the axiom of choice in his construction. And for the ultra filter argument I outlined, you need to use the ultra filter lemma, which is like a version of Zorn's lemma. This concludes this video on compactifications. Thank you very much for your attention.